This video demonstration is brought to you by the Crafts Channel in association with General Hobby. Hi, my name is Kate Hemmings and I'm pleased to welcome you to a special project video demonstration brought to you by the Crafts Channel in conjunction with Dremel. Dremel offers a fantastic range of hobby tools which are perfect for your crafting projects. Today I'm joined by Corinne Brad, who's going to be using the Dremel glue gun to create a decorated canvas. Hi Corinne. Hello Kate. So we're going to be using the Dremel glue gun today. Yes. Yeah, now the Dremel glue gun, it's lovely, um, very ergonomic. Looks Have a nice. handy stand here that simply clips up and then clips back down again. Ooh. So you can keep it on your work surface. You've got a silicon sleeve around the tip of this and it comes with interchangeable tips which you must change when it's cold because it does get very hot. Okay. I'm using the fine tip on there at the minute because I don't want to have loads of glue. Buttons are quite lightweight, they don't need a lot of glue to keep it on the canvas. And I'm using the clear glue sticks. Now these are 11mm glue sticks. And you'll see on the top here there's a, a dual heat setting for the glue gun. So that's set on high for the clear ones. You can also set it on low because okay. they do a range of glitter sticks as well, which are great for Christmas decorations and for kids' parties. Bad. You want to melt the glitter sticks on the low setting. But we'll keep it on high for the minute. Okay. Now, I'm just going to move that to one side because what we're going to do is we're going to create a canvas like this. I it's love simply, these. do you? I must admit, they're quite up to date at the minute. Very trendy. Seen them in lots of places on the internet and things like this. And the other thing is it's a great way to, to use up all the buttons that you've got knocking around because everyone's got tins we of buttons have a everywhere. Lot of those, and don't we? The, most of them, let's be fair, are black or white and you never know what to do with them. No. Um, black gives a really dramatic effect here on a red and gold background. There's one I've done over here which I've used sort of old white and mother of pearl and green buttons for a much more subtle effect. Um, and actually I really like that one. Oh, I'm, that I'm really beautiful. pleased. But what I'm gonna do one I'm gonna do oh look. Lots of pinks and ye oranges and yellows. So start, this is a small canvas. You can pick these up in art shops. I mean, you can get them online. Sketch out your design in pencil. And then I'm just going to fill it in with three colours of paint. And I'd suggest that you start with your lightest colour first. Because if your um, paintbrush work isn't that good, you can always go over any areas with a darker colour paint. Handy tip. So we're going to do the centre of this, first of all, in yellow. Just okay. smooth strokes. Make sure you do cover your pencil marks, because you don't want them showing through. And I'd also suggest that what you do is you put two thin coats of acrylic paint on rather than one thick coat because it will dry much more evenly. You get a much better effect. Better coverage. Yeah. And a crafter's acrylic dries so quickly, really. I mean, you, you, if you, especially if you put it in a warm place. Um, and then once the paint is dry, the glue goes on extremely easily. So quite simply, you'd have the background of the tree in yellow. And then, as I say, if you've made any mistakes, you can simply cover it up with a darker oh, shade of orange. Great contrast there as yeah. well. Yeah. It doesn't have to be perfect. I mean, use a decent paintbrush. Don't use a kid's craft brush because you don't get a decent point to it. Okay. Um, and make sure that your strokes are quite even and sort of go in the direction of the, the branches of the tree. So if I can just hand that to you, Kate, and of I'd course. like you to finish painting that in your spare time. Can't promise that. <laughs> what you should end up with is a canvas that looks like this. So nice even colour on it, nice very simplified picture and this is where the fun part comes. The buttons. Because this is when you grab your small collection of buttons that you may have at home. Small. <laughs> You're jealous yes, of them of aren't course. you? Yes of course. And simply place buttons in the gaps Quite between randomly. your buttons. Yeah, don't use huge buttons. Um, I mean you know for example if you had a big pink button like that it would look completely out of place on there. Yeah. Decide what your maximum size button is going to be and then stick with that. I mean, I'd say that's probably the biggest button you're going to want to use on a canvas yeah, like this. it's quite a small design, isn't it? And you need to place them around the canvas, put the big ones in first, and then you can put the small ones in to fill the gaps up later mm -hmm. on. The other thing is, you might find that you've got buttons that have recesses in the top of them. They look quite nice, but if you want an all-over smooth design, don't be afraid to turn the button upside down and use the flat back as the decorative side because the glue gun is, is thick enough, or the glue in the glue gun is thick enough, that you can fill in that recess and it will stick to the canvas easily. Okay, great. So I'm going to select the buttons that I need and then in a moment I'm going to show you how you glue them onto the canvas. Thanks very much, Corinne. That's the end of part one. Stay tuned for part two.